Mark McLaughlin from the Times. Um, I'll have a wee go at answering some of the questions that the panel or the people in the audience have asked about the press. If a consensus emerges around an issue, you will get buy-in from the press. I'll use an example. Um, the Scottish Affairs Committee has been discussing the decriminalisation of drugs. It's a hugely divisive issue, um, but a consensus is emerging that this is the right thing for Scotland. Um, on Tuesday, a very senior police officer went to the committee and said this is what we need. Um, the Times put it on the front page. The Daily Record did a, an editorial saying this is what we need to do. So the media is led by the issues. Um, the problem the media has got right now is because it is so polarised that whatever you write, you, you can't win because one side will say, you didn't say that right, that doesn't reflect my world view. So if the Citizens Assembly can have a consensus, the media will be led by the issues. Um, the question that I have goes back to this issue about the, the buy-in from the unionist parties. There is already chat of them telling their supporters to, to boycott this. So how do you make sure, if this, if this continues, that the people that you select at random, I'm presuming you're not going to press gang them, they just take the application, put it in the bin, and say, I'm having nothing to do with that, and, and you don't end up with a citizen, citizen's assembly full of essentially left-wing nationalists. Well, the left-wing part I might be comfortable with. <laughs> 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 We, I mean, the, the, the selection process will be very careful, but the, the point you make is an interesting one. It's one we, and again, this will be my decision because we want to be hands off to make sure it is a random selected group of people. But there is, has been a debate about whether you ask people for their political views. Mm -hmm. But that has a danger um, because you don't want to, in that sense, you want a cross section of Scottish society. But you don't want to replicate the political divisions in Scottish society. Um, so, how do you do the two things at once? Uh, and it's, it's, there's no easy answer to that question. Also, uh, dare I say, BBC Question Time perhaps suggests that some audience members lie about their political affiliations when they're being recruited. So how, how do we know that people, when they're asked what their political affiliation are, are telling us the truth? Whereas you know what socio-economic class are, you know what ethnicity they are. So my hope is simply selecting 100 people at random will get a genuine cross-sex of society. And obviously if we pick up that there's a serious boycott as a result of the two major political parties, then we might have to look at this again, but I actually don't think there will be. I don't think political parties saying they're not willing to take part will actually make much difference to the ordinary citizen, no matter their political views, because they want their people to be heard. They want their voices to be heard in, the, in this process. And maybe you could say more about that, Louise, in terms of you had no political axe to grind when you were invited. No, and I think it's very important to, to say that even in the Irish process, there was obviously a very clear pro-life, pro-choice. I mean, that's as divisive as you're ever going to get on a topic. And we weren't polled at entry on how we would have voted if we had to vote on the first day. We weren't polled. Um, I would say that there were some people who came in as no, and there were some people who came in as yes. And then there was a whole bunch of people who came in going, yeah, maybe no, maybe I'm not sure, I don't know, I'm not, I, yeah, but no, but not but then, but oh, oh, oh. oh. And that is where most people actually sat. They didn't sit in the black or the white. They sat in that kind of grey area in the middle going, I don't know. And the process of the deep learning and the space and the time and the expertise over five full weekends changed a lot of people from that, I'm not sure, to, okay, I see. This is what we need to do. This is how we need to do it. And that's what it's going to look like. It, it just did. The magic is in the activity of doing it, of getting normal people, getting an expert panel, expert speakers, balanced speakers. You know, balanced speakers as in we had a pro-choice speaker, we had a pro-life speaker, we had you know, a medical expert on this side, a medical expert on that side, an ethicist on this side, an ethicist on that side. And that was the way the whole thing was ran. And we had very, very serious discussions, deliberations that took 
the stuff in out of us, to be honest with you, it really did. Um, but we were very proud of what we came up with at the end, and in fact we were quite shocked ourselves when we did the vote on the last day. We ourselves, as a hundred people, couldn't believe what we voted for. Because we weren't sitting around going, well, I'm voting yes for that, I'm voting no for that. We were still asking questions right up to the last minute. We, people assume that a citizens' assembly is a talking shop of people just talking at each other. It's actually not. It's people sitting going, what did he just say? Now, and how is that related to what that other person said last week? And what? And if we put that and that together, then what does that mean? Or oh, oh, that? Well, two, two, nobody's joining those two things together. Why is nobody talking about that? Okay, we didn't write that down. And do, do you know? Do you understand what I mean? So, so it is people who may have strong views either way, but are open to discussing and open to those views changing. Some dramatically, some just a little bit. Can I just piggyback on that? Because I want to go back to the, your opening remarks, um, because it, it wasn't evident until the fifth weekend where the mood was going in the room, and e even it was quite late in the fifth weekend. So, if the journalistic mantra and I'm sorry if I appear critical, but I've had a couple of years of this now to deal with in Ireland. If the journalistic mantra is to say, well, we'll wait until we see what consensus is emerging, you're going to miss the point. And the point is the process. You have to witness the process.